Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Keller, CEO of CFP Board, and we want to say a big thank you for joining us today to learn more about our upcoming public awareness campaign. We're excited to share with you the campaign strategy and show you the new creative concepts that uh, will uh, be part of the campaign. We appreciate you taking time to stay connected with us at CFP Board as we continue to work to uphold CFP certification. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. If you run into issues with the audio for this presentation, or if it seems like your slides are out of sync, you can refresh your webinar console. To do that, you press F5 or Control-R for Windows or Command-R on a Mac. There's a Q&A function on your screen that you can use to submit questions to us at any time during the program. At the end of the presentation, we'll address questions. If we don't get to your question, someone from CFP Board will follow up after the webinar. And we'll be posting a recording of today's webinar on our website, cfp.net. Joining me for the presentation today is CFP Board's Managing Director of Marketing and Communications, Jim Katsunas. Also here is Diana Ricciardi, Director of Advertising and our Public Awareness Campaign. We're at CFP Board Headquarters at uh, 1425 K Street. Today we're excited to share with you the brand new public awareness campaign. But first we'll share a little bit of background on the why we actually have a public awareness campaign and the what it has accomplished over the last 12 or 13 years. We'll review the campaign's objectives, its results, and the media plan for 2023. And we'll also share exclusive previews of the television advertisement and other supporting materials for the campaign. We'll discuss how the paid media is supported through public relations and the other work that we do at CFP Board. One of CFP Board's five strategic priorities is awareness. The public awareness campaign supports this priority by seeking to increase awareness of CFP certification as the must-have financial planner credential for consumers of financial advice. CFP professionals generated the idea for public awareness campaign back when I was on the road in 2009 and 2010. What I heard was that certificates overwhelmingly said they thought we at CFP Board needed to do more to promote CFP certification. And as part of the work that we did contemplating a campaign like this, we did research and found that CFP certificates, for the most part, would be willing to support a fee increase as long as the money for the fee increase and for the campaign were only used for the direct expenses of the financial planning uh, public awareness campaign. We launched the first campaign in the spring of 2011. Uh, today, certificates still continue to tell us that growing awareness of the CFP brand is one of the top priorities for our organization. This year, on March 20th, next Monday, we will launch the fourth public awareness campaign. The cost to produce the various advertisements is such that we typically will use the, the advertisements three or four years, and that's the case here as well. We've seen a significant increase in overall awareness since the campaign launched. 
the campaign's target audience, which we call the mass affluent initiator, is a proprietary target market, and it's a subset of the mass affluent. These are individuals in our target market who are 35 to 64. They're employed or recently retired, have a minimum household income of 125,000 and investable assets of 100,000 to a million dollars. Now, when I'm out on the road, Deanna and Jim, people say, well, that's not my target market. I only work, look, when you see the ad and you see the kind of properties that our media buyers have selected, you'll clearly see that people with incomes above and below that target market. Jim? Yes, um, Kevin, thank you. This year, our new uh, advertising campaign partner, Bunton, based out of Nashville, Tennessee, helped develop what we believe will be a truly breakthrough creative campaign. To make certain of the campaign's effectiveness prior to creative development, our research partner conducted qualitative research with 12 focus groups comprised of our target audience. Participants consisted of three major groups, those aware of CFP certification, those not aware of CFP certification, and clients of CFP professionals. This research was conducted nationally across four cities. We were in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Orange County, California, Dallas, Texas, and Boston, Massachusetts. Overall, the campaign's theme and creative concepts resonated with our target audience in but, supporting but Jim, our the, But the campaign really evolved through the course. So I think we should talk about that a little bit. We had yeah. some ideas, and yes, it resonated. Talk about how, that, how it evolved. Yeah, so, well, actually, first we, we had two different creative concepts that we tested in Atlanta before we did the national uh, focus groups. And um, one of those two campaigns rose to the top. We actually took elements of those two campaigns to create the, uh, the campaign that we have today that we'll be sharing later on today. And then we took that on the road to four different cities, met with the different target audience in those cities, and there were several different vignettes, we want to call them vignettes, concepts. And um, the ones uh, that we landed on were actually three. So as you mentioned earlier, this year we'll be launching with one uh, campaign vignette, and then over the next two, three, four years we'll be launching the other vignettes. But um, yeah, so the, the, the ones that made it to the final list were the ones that resonated the most with our certificates. I didn't, go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, the creative draw is a parallel um, between a high-risk situation with the feeling of uncertainty and the confidence and security that one feels when working with a qualified professional. Overall, the campaign's theme and creative concepts you know, support our brand promise, and our brand promise is providing confidence today for a more secure tomorrow. The campaign also emphasizes the CFP acronym and plants in the public's mind to ask the right question. Are you a certified financial planner? Jim, you know, I was just on the road with Dan Moisand a couple of weeks ago on the West Coast, and one of the comments that we sometimes hear, not a lot, but people say, nobody ever asked me if I'm a CFP, and this campaign is designed very specifically to get to that point. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, we also got the benefits of our new C6 status that's allowing us to be much more direct in our messaging as well. The campaign, as Kevin mentioned, will be launching on Monday, March 20th. It will run for nine weeks. Uh, the bulk of the campaign will run for nine weeks through uh, Sunday, May 21st. Um, we run our campaign during springtime, right after tax season, when finances are top of mind for our target audience. And then evergreen elements are running throughout the year, such as social media, as search engine optimization, et cetera, and Deanna will share a little bit about that in, in, in a minute. In partnership with our Bunton, or their advertising agency, Bunton, we created a media plan that delivers a combination of the right media channels and the frequency necessary to get us the best results. This year we have a broad, wide breadth of media partners, some of which are reflected here. We know the core media usage habits of our proprietary target audience. They are significant consumers of news, sports, lifestyle, and financial programming. This year, there are new and noteworthy sponsorships that we're excited about, 
ESPN's first take sponsorship during the NFL draft and March Madness, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, as well as CNN's show Before the Bell. I'll now pass it over to Deanna to share us more information about our media mix. Thanks, Jim. While March 20th through the 21st of May are our highest supported weeks of advertising, as Jim mentioned, throughout the year we will be running Evergreen Social and Search Engine Marketing. Wait a second, you can't just say Evergreen Social. <clears throat> what does that mean for the non-advertising person? Sure. So evergreen is a term used to describe ongoing, um, and what this means in this case is that while our highest uh, paid advertising support will occur during the months I mentioned, March 20th through May 21st, our support and pay um, for the channel, such as social and search engine marketing, will continue through the end of the year just to ensure that you know, we have the ability to continuously communicate with our target audience. And I think also for those of you that are not familiar with uh, some of the other advertising terms, uh, search engine marketing, also known as SEM, are paid ads on Google and Microsoft Search. Um, getting into the breakdown of our media spend a little further, television continues to make up the highest percentage of our media mix, approximately three-fourths, with 61% of traditional TV and 15% of streaming TV to maximize the reach, and frequency, excuse me, the reach and frequency with our audience. Digital includes video pre-roll on YouTube, as well as display and banner ads, and even things like AccuWeather app integration. Audio consists of various placement types across Pandora, SiriusXM, and iHeartRadio streaming services. The campaign is guaranteed to collect over 1 billion impressions. And impressions is the total amount of exposure our content receives. Getting into our new campaign and language around our new campaign, it's got to be a CFP is our new campaign tagline. As Jim mentioned, the campaign emphasizes the CFP acronym. The establishment of our 501c6 tax status, we can now be more direct than ever in our messaging to consumers about the benefits of working with a CFP professional and where to search for one. The campaign's call to action, or as we like to call it, CTA, is find your CFP professional, which will be used across all media channels. This CTA will drive consumers to the letsmakeaplan.org website, where they can search for a CFP professional. Deanna, uh, Dave has a question. He says, how much of our renewal fee goes to the campaign and has this changed since 2011? So, Dave, thank you for that question. Uh, of the renewal fee, it was $145 until uh, the fee increase that took effect last October. And with that increase, we increased the amount going to the campaign from 145 to $160. So it's $160. Uh, there are about uh, 95,000 CFP professionals overall. So uh, thank you for the question. But again, $160 total. The uh, uh, the media buy initially here is about 12 to 13 million dollars. Uh, we hold some back so that we have some additional, uh, uh, you know, some additional ammunition if we need it later in the year. But uh, all in all, it's about a 15 plus million dollar campaign. The difference between what we actually spend on media and the uh, total collected, we have credit card fees like everybody. It's a big chunk of it, a part of that. But more important, the agency fees to develop the content. That's why we develop a number of vignettes in one year and then hold them over so that we can be more efficient and not create new content every year and do it efficiently. Sorry, Dion. Yeah. No, sure. Um, 
to Kevin's point, the, the advertising will be spread over the various years, but as mentioned, for this year, uh, we're looking to focus on the CTA, find your CSP professional. Um, as we were mentioning, with the 501c6 tax status, this year we have the ability to be very direct, more direct than ever in our messaging, so both with the tagline and with the CTA. Um, so this campaign, um, while we mentioned, have various vignettes that will be used to um, support the campaign over the years. This year's campaign and vignette we're calling Bungie, and we're very, very excited to share with you all sneak previews of those um, vignettes, both the 30 TV commercial and the 15 TV commercial. Um, each spot will play two times, so if you could, just, uh, just touch. Double check that. That's eh, pretty good. Yeesh. Not well, crying, are you? Let's tighten that. And... Ooh. Wait, 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 what was that? Huh? What? That? No, don't worry about that. Here we go. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Do you have a question? Are you a certified financial planner? Yes. I'm a CFP professional. CFP <laughs> professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org. Double check that. That's eh, pretty good. Yeesh. Well, Not crying, are you? Let's tighten that. And... Ooh. Wait, 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 what was that? Huh? What? That? No, don't worry about that. Here we go. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Do you have a question? Are you a certified financial planner? Yes. I'm a CFP professional. CFP <laughs> professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Are you a certified financial planner? I'm a CFP professional. CFP professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Are you a certified financial planner? I'm a CFP professional. CFP professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Deanna, would you, would you maybe just explain how the 15s are used? in the course of the nine weeks and where they come in and how what the, the strategy is with the 15s and the 30s. Sure. So the reason um, we typically create or just in general advertising includes various cuts of video is because longer form content obviously is longer. So sometimes um, in different avenues, you know, it, people are less likely to stay on to watch 30 seconds. Whereas for 15s, um, we have the ability to capture the audience as well, but tell the same story in a shorter period of time. Um, specific to TV, um, we have the ability to have greater frequency with individuals that are viewing. With 15 second spots, um, they're more cost effective and therefore more efficient. So we have the ability to place them more frequently in different locations. Um, and research shows that 15-second ads are more likely to, draw, to drive ad recall and boost overall engagement and awareness versus longer form videos. Which is the objective of the campaign. Before we go on here, um, uh, Howard says, was that the same spot four times? No, it was a 30-second two times and a 15-second, but essentially, Yes, it was the, the same vignette multiple times. Another question, somebody asked, why are there credit card fees? I mentioned that that's part of the expense because people renew online and, uh, you know, we have to pay, just like any business, a credit card fee. So that's part of that. Uh, Howard again asks, why are, uh, he says, so many of my clients watch MSNBC constantly. 
Ron there Burr. was an editorial comment there when he said constantly. Why don't I see that network on the list? Actually, MSNBC is part of the buy. These were representative and not the entire amount, but we're, because news is so important, that's a, a big part of the point. Darren says, here's a great marketing tagline. You don't need a CFP, you deserve one. Well, we agree uh, with you, Darren, and we hope more members of the public uh, agree and, and, and hire one. So, Deanna, back to you. Sure. So, to help represent some of the um, different executions and different placements that we'll have, we have various types of digital, um, digital placements here. Um, for example, what you're seeing are display banners. This campaign will utilize digital display banners that are animated as well as rich media, which I will explain in a moment. The messaging will play off asking the right questions and is your financial advisor a CFP professional? The digital display banners will run across desktop, mobile, and tablets with premium and contextually relevant environments. All digital ads will link directly to the letsmakeaplan.org website where consumers can search for a CFP professional. Moving into our rich media units. Digital rich media units help to raise awareness while allowing the target audience to engage more within the unit since they meet the consumer where they are in the digital environment. So, for example, I'm sure many of you have been on a website or reading an article and have seen uh, various advertisements, um, you know, show up in the middle of your reading, atop your reading. These are different examples of that. You'll also see an in-app uh, supported unit for AccuWeather. So we have different kinds of executions across different places. Another example are paid social ads. These have two main KPIs, raising brand awareness overall and driving more website traffic. These types, excuse me, these types of ads target everyone that meet our proprietary target audience criteria, but we also use them to retarget the audience that saw our first ad in an intentional effort to promote even more site traffic. In addition to our paid media, we maximize and optimize our, our campaign using public relation opportunities with consumer-facing media and use our CFP board ambassadors to extend the brand message. Our owned assets, like our consumer-facing website, letsmakeaplan.org, and social media channels will be updated to include the new campaign and to enhance our overall reach and frequency. Campaign assets are also going to be available for certificates as well to extend the reach of the campaign. CFP.net slash PAC hosts a wide variety of these tools. Some examples include TV spots, banner ads, radio spots, sample social media posts, and more. Certificates can use these tools to support their own professional branding and marketing initiatives and link them directly to, the, to their own Let's Make a Plan profile. The toolkit will be available with the launch on March 20th for those of you seeking new clients, it's also a really great time to create and or update your find a CFP professional profile in your CFP board account. Back to you, Kevin. Great. Thank you, Deanna. We had some questions come in and uh, have been coming in. Rich Rojek says, looks great. Congratulations to you and the team. Rich, thank you for the, the kind feedback. Um, Jill asks, why do we exclusively focus on the age group 35 to 64? I've had that question from the beginning. Deanna, why don't, why don't you take that target market sure. question? Sure. So through our research, um, a blend of demographic and psychographic characteristics surfaced, and we use them to allow us to identify which consumers are most likely to engage with the brand. Um, to be more effective and more efficient, uh, we target our advertising and allocate our media budget accordingly. Well, and you know, can't the, the you know the um, question for Jill again? We have to buy. We have to. We have to select the bullseye. Right. But 
you know, as you said, we're going to be part of on ESPN for the NFL draft. We've got people older and younger than that. We're buying uh, a, a very specific demographic, and, uh, you know, we can't – I'd love to have budget – to cover Everybody. you know 18 to 80 but right. uh, we have to have to kind of zero in um let's see what question do we have here uh, uh let's see uh how blockers let me here's a question from howard how are you ensuring that the campaign reaches a diverse audience? Diana, why don't you take that? Sure. Thank you for your question, Howard. The campaign is designed to reach a variety of diverse audiences across the media channels, across the different TV um, channels and programming, as we mentioned. The media mix is selected based on high performance ratings to reach our target audience. Uh, these specific programs are selected not only based on high ratings, but also to ensure that we're reaching our diverse audiences. So an example, we purchase advertising on CNN, and one of the network shows is Anderson Cooper. Uh, Anderson Cooper uh, not only has high ratings for our overall target audience, but it also performs very well with both black and LGBTQ uh, audiences. Great. Thank you, Diana. Um, Robert uh, has a question about the difference between the 15s and the 30s. So for you, Jim, the, he, Robert says the 30-second ad did not appear to provide more value than the 15. What value? So first of all, that's good because it's 15 seconds is not hard. What value do we think we get from the extra 15 seconds? Well, the, the, the 15 seconds, well, we'll launch the campaign, as Diana said, actually starting with the 30-second spots, which tell the deeper story. And that deeper story is really focusing on a high-risk situation and that feeling of uncertainty that you see in the ad. You know, the bungee jumper, he has that high-risk situation. He has this uncertainty, this un, you know, uncomfortableness. But then the confidence and security that he feels when he's actually sitting in front of someone who's qualified, such as a CFP professional. So the, the 30 second spots tell that longer, deeper story. The 15 second spots, as Diana mentioned, you know, it's really about frequency. So we won't need to show those 30 second spots as much. Um, but at the beginning of the campaign, to you know, really, you know, lock in the our, our brand message as well as our acronym. That's why we have to do the longer commercial 30 seconds indeed um, Mike asks only some of my clients say that they see our ads why is this I thought we were targeting them Diana uh, what say you to Mike sure um, kind of in contrast I think to the other question of why you know why do we target so narrowly with the age group I think you know, through targeting, we have the ability to be selective with who we're trying to reach, right, using a variety of mass reaching awareness tactics. Um, and so sort of in the contrary, we don't have the ability to to reach uh, everybody, but, but therefore trying to be as targeted as we can. We focus this year's budget on pinpointing the viewers efficiently, but also trying to deliver as much frequency as we can. Um, given the budget, as Kevin mentioned, and the different consumption habits of our target audience, it is unlikely that we'll reach 100% of all of those people. Um, but within the nine weeks, we are looking to achieve a target reach of 88.2%. So 88.2% of the people will see the ad yes. how many times at least? Uh, at least and approximately. Times, I, think. Uh, I think a little higher than that. Yeah, it's 11. almost 11. 11 almost times. 11 times. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Lance has a question. We'll take this one. Um, Lance says, I've yet to source a prospective client from let me, well, Let's Make a Plan. What degree of confidence should certificates have in this new campaign? I'll take that one on, and I'll let you, you fill it. Lance, I, you know, I, I hear you. I, I just don't know where else you can, you know, what else you could do for $160 to participate in a targeted national media campaign 
that promotes the very service and certification that you've earned. So the, the confidence, I think, comes. We do an independent brand tracking survey, and, you know, the goal of the campaign initially for many years was just to increase awareness. And we've added to that, coming down the marketing funnel, increasing awareness, preference for, and intent to use. So that's why you're seeing now with this much more directive, ask for a CFP. Make sure you ask the question, and then we make the point, it's got to be a CFP. And then we say, find your CFP at letsmakeaplan.org. So, Lance, I appreciate the question. I think the confidence comes in the ongoing review, the board of directors, I have KPIs, key performance indicators, all of our team is working, the agency is working to grow awareness. We're all aligned with growing awareness of CFP certification. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, what are we doing considering all of the ad-free options for TV and video? How are we making sure people are seeing that? Deanna? Yeah. So despite the influx of streaming and subscription platforms that, that have emerged over the few years, um, there really is still no sort of shortage of, of impressions. Um, and, and as mentioned, impressions are the amount of time or as much as people see the advertisements that we're putting out there. Um, so, and, and with that, we leverage quite a bit of, of added value integrations across several mass-reaching national cable networks to insert the CFP branded assets within programming content um, it, it versus the commercial breaks. And therefore, if someone even subscribes to an ad-free platform, they still have the ability to be reached um, with our advertisement. Great. Question for you, Jim. Uh, Frank says, I like the ads and what I'm seeing. Well done. On the last campaign, he says, the same ad in the agency was used to the point that they seemed outdated. Can you please clarify how long the life of this ad will be? Frank, thank you uh, for, for your question. Um, as we mentioned earlier, you know, this campaign, we created three vignettes. So the first vignette that we'll be launching with is the one that we shared, Bungie. Uh, but we have two other vignettes that we'll be releasing in year 24, 2024, as well as 2025. And probably in 2024 and 2025, we may run multiple vignettes at the same time. But, you know, because of the large investment to produce these ads, you know, we produced them in a way so that it will at least run for three years. The last campaign ran for five. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. When will this campaign end? The TV portion ends on May 21st. So it goes, starts on Monday, March 20th, ends May 21st, nine weeks total. But then there are portions that go, as Deanna said, that are evergreen, the uh, uh, search engine optimization, some of the additional electronic digital portions that goes and, longer. And the ads will also run on YouTube pre-roll throughout the yep. end of the year as well. Yeah, that's um, Let's see. I'm going to just take this question from Chris. Campaign looks good. General comments regarding the message. One thing that helps is when the board updates data regarding what percent of financial professionals have attained CFP. I've noticed that the board tends to say about 20% of advisors. That's true. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's asking what percent, I think, of, of advisors are CFP certified. That, Chris, that number continues to go up. We had our largest March exam ever. We currently have almost 95,000 CFP professionals. Most estimates of the number of retail advisors are in the neighborhood of 290 to 300,000. We're at about 30 to a third, 30 percent to a third. So that's the answer there. Uh, let's go, um, how, <laughs> so I'll, I'll give this one to 
Uh, how were the actors shown in the commercials selected? Uh, do you want to give just a little background, you know, with the director, the casting? Uh, uh, Jim, yeah. do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I didn't like your first round of, you know, although we used some of them. I didn't <laughs> like the, the first the, casting The call. director, Kevin Keller. <laughs> That's what we did, Keller. The Keller. Um, yeah, so the, the agency, yeah, they did a casting call in L.A. That's where the uh, the commercial was produced. And um, they went through the, the casting call, and they went through and selected their top picks. Um, and then we were given the opportunity to then hear them as well as view them. And um, as Kevin, our director, uh, said, he, uh, he didn't particularly care for them. So we had to go back to the they board. They weren't attractive people. Yeah, they were not attractive <laughs> people. But uh, where we landed, they were, we did land with some very attractive people. Um, but so the, you know, we, we keep in mind the different age demographics, um, as well as gender demographics and racial, uh, racial and ethnic graphics. Yeah. So uh, in the vignettes that you'll see over the next three years, uh, we do cover a wide variety of diversity. Thanks. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> Um, Eric asks, Eric with a K asks, when will the public awareness campaign end permanently? Well, Eric, uh, look, I'll tell you, uh, the board has continued to make awareness a priority, and the board continues to look closely at the results. So uh, to paraphrase one previous chair of the board, We'll continue the campaign as long as it's working, and our research says that it continues to work. So, uh, uh, but I, you know, I think it's an important part. It it is uh, uh, helps, I think, with another board objective, and that is, you know, advancing the profession of financial planning. These ads not only make the public aware, but I think they also imprint in the public's mind that financial planning is a profession. Um, next question, uh, social media. Jim, you want to talk about social media? Yeah, sure. Um, how, how is it a part of the campaign? Well, you know, as Deanna shared in one of the presentation slides, social media is an integral component of the campaign. It's part of our media mix and our buy. Research, you know, indicates that our target audience are heavy consumers of Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, we will be, you know, showing ads as well on Instagram. And so we really use social media to generate awareness through our paid advertising as well as boosted content that's delivered through to our or drives traffic to our Let's Make a Plan.org website. Uh, that content on the website is updated weekly. We have a group of about 50 CFP board ambassadors or CFP professionals who write that content for our consumers. And we get over a million people to actually come to that website. So just a related question from Ashley, will it be updated social media ads? All of that will be in the toolkit, is that right, yes. Diana? Yes, it will. Great. Dallas asks, only one ad this cycle. Previously we did two. Actually, the last time we did three. Mm -hmm. We shot three ads. We have three ads in the can. We're holding back so that, as somebody said earlier, they thought they got stale, right? Yeah. So we have some can. We have a couple in the in the can for next year. Uh, we've got a, somebody from uh, the office of the controller of the currency writes in with the college football playoffs CFP showing constantly on sports networks. Any thoughts of leveraging the campaign around? You know, look, I uh, um, every time I hear CFP in the fall, especially being an Ohio State grad and a fan of Ohio State football, uh, I, you know, I kind of, uh, I, it seems as though they've taken that over. Look, we've looked at it from a legal standpoint. There's nothing we can do there. Uh, I don't know. We occasionally, when we've had some holdback money, we've advertised in the World Series, so we've done a couple things. That's why we hold a little back for opportunities. So that uh, there. Um, let's see. Uh, great job, everyone, from Bruno. Uh, James asks, uh, the bridge in the ad, was that the New River Gorge in West Virginia? Close. <laughs> I've been to the New River Gorge in West Virginia in a raft underneath, um, but um, no, it was actually in, 
eastern L.A. County, which yeah. we in December it was cold, and I think they got snow there the last couple of weeks, so I'm glad we got that out of the way. Um, look, I think we're almost done. Deanna, final words from you? No, oh, thank you, and we are excited to share with you guys. Yep. Every Jim? Um, same. Very excited about the new campaign. We really believe it's going to be a breakthrough campaign. Um, it's already getting a lot of buzz around here at the office. We actually <laughs> shared it with our colleagues here at CFP Board today, shared it with our board of directors uh, about a week ago. So um, we're all very excited, and uh, we hope our certificates love it as much as we do. Yeah, you know, uh, our budget is uh, less than one half of one percent of all of the marketing money spent by banks, brokerages, and insurance companies. And so, you know, I said to the team, the direction I gave, if we have two old people walking on the beach at sunset, we will have failed because that's basically every other campaign that's out there. And uh, we need a breakthrough campaign. Uh, I hope you feel good about it. I know there will be some who uh, will have strong opinions. Please let me know if I'm out on the road. Look forward to seeing you. I'll be at the SHIFT con uh, conference this weekend, so if anybody's there, I want to thank everybody for joining our webinar today. We appreciate all you do for the profession and your ongoing support of CFP certification. I want to thank both uh, Jim Katsunas, our Managing Director of Communications and Marketing, and Deanna Ricciardi, our Director of uh, Advertising and Public Awareness Campaign. A recording of this presentation will be posted on CFP Board's website within the next few business days. And CFP Board will follow up individually with those that ask questions that we did not get to. I want to thank our executive producer here, Mary Ellen, in the, in the office. And with that, we'll say goodbye until next time. Bye-bye.